So, yeah, while it's raining, snowing here, um, I took my car and my bike and I decided to spend a few days in southern France. And uh, yes, it's windy, you can see it on the pictures, but it was uh, just absolutely unbelievable. End of November, temperatures uh, down at the sea of uh, 14, 16, 18, uh, up to 20 degrees, and that end of November. For people living there, probably not a surprise, but obviously when you come from uh, Germany, from the north, it's uh, quite a surprise. And finding yourself and your Africa twin in the port of Saint-Tropez <laughs> is, is quite an experience and I wanted to share that with you. So if you have the the opportunity and for the Europeans uh, it's only a, a small drive of a, a few hundred, well for me it was a, about a thousand kilometers one way, but it was worthwhile. Uh, it, obviously I took my my Africa twin on the, I, I didn't drive down, there was so much rain up north that uh, I made the right decision to take it, take the bike on uh, the back of uh, of the trailer. Uh, and I, I left uh, the trailer at the hotel and then I went for my tours. And the tour took me um, actually in two, uh, in several days from uh, Marseille and especially the area uh, which you see here is uh, Cassis um, and uh, the Calanque area, if you can uh, walk and not drive like me, it's uh, worthwhile. And uh, the Route des Crêtes, which you can see up there, and which we'll go to now. Several things. First of all, I was enchanted by my DCT Africa Twin. It was a tremendous uh, experience. Uh, why? Because there was so much slow driving in the villages, in the cities, that with the DCT it was just enjoyable. It was not uh, a pain, it was just enjoyable. Sit and uh, just enjoy. And um, that is um, quite impressive. I mean, if you compare that with my GS, I'm not sure I would have enjoyed the trip so much as much with my GS as with my Africa Twin. Uh, with and that's not only thanks to the engine, but thanks also to the um, uh, DCT. Here is a view from up uh, the mountain we just saw down there the view of Cassis and then you can see the beginning of the Calanque and you can't see Marseille but Marseille is just a bit further down down the sea. Uh, this area is probably, it's, you don't have to go to South Africa or Australia if you live in Europe and you don't want to go that far and you want to take your bike. Uh, this uh, very special area, I would say between Marseille and Menton, Menton, Monaco, and the whole area is uh, just unbelievable. It's unbelievable on the seaside uh, as we are driving now, but I also took a few days uh, to go into the mountains. I didn't film it all and I wouldn't bore you with, with, you with it. Um, there are just exceptional areas uh, on the seaside. Uh, on the in the mountainside, uh, especially uh, Gorge du Verdon, uh, which uh, many of you may know, uh, which I I, I did uh, again after many many years, and the beauty of driving end of November is obviously that you can uh, enjoy these places without a lot of traffic, uh, without a lot of tourists. Uh, you're basically more or less alone. There are just a very few bikes, but otherwise, and a few cars, but otherwise they're very much alone. It's uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, when you know Southern France in the summer, well, that's not enjoyable anymore. First of all, uh, there is heat, there is cars, there's traffic, there is uh, uh, traffic jams. And on these small roads, traffic jams can be also for motorcycles, can be a real showstopper. So, 
having the opportunity to be there out of season and you, know, you don't have to wait end of November or December to do this. You can do this in, in October, November, uh, and you can do this on a short notice. It took me about 10 hours to drive down, which means that uh, you can look at uh, the uh, weather forecast and uh, de decide on short notice, especially hotels are quite inexpensive and there's lots of space. So you can just book one day ahead and, and drive down and, and, and have an have a absolutely great time. And you can do it once, you can do it twice. These roads, doing them on a regular basis is just uh, so much, so much fun, as you can see, probably. The, the movie doesn't show the, the, the details of the whole trip because it's, it's a pain. I'm showing you the Route des Crêtes uh, from Cassis, in Cassis, uh, on, on, on the mountainside. I'm not showing you Marseille, I'm not showing you the Caronque area because you can't access by bike, just a few Caronques are accessible by motorized means. So I'm just showing you the small roads here. Uh, basically I followed the seaside uh, from Marseille up to uh, Monaco. I didn't go up to Menton. I followed uh, this road down uh, to uh, Fréjus and then to Cannes and then from Cannes onwards. And it's a pain uh, right, driving on the seaside because traffic is, there's not much traffic, but it's, it's uh, limitations to 50, sometimes 30, a lot of villages. So you spend a lot of time uh, driving very slowly, which was interesting because consumption went down to about 4.4 liters on the bike. Uh, that's enjoyable. You can enjoy, uh, obviously, the whole area much more because you drive very slowly. Uh, but it's not something uh, that you can, uh, if you're not patient, it's not something I recommend doing. On the other hand, in the in the hinterland, in the mountains, uh, you're much more free to move and, and it's much more enjoyable. So uh, if you plan to go there, uh, do a mix of uh, sea and mountain. And when I say mountains, we're, we're talking real mountains here in this area. So uh, don't worry, I'm not trying to jump up the cliff, uh, which is very high cliffs here, just to give you an impression of how close you are to the seaside and how wonderful nature is end of November here in southern France in this area. There will part of, be part of the movie. Uh, I'll spend the driving on the coastal road from Fréjus down to Cannes. I didn't, f I filmed it all, but I cut a lot out because uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very, very long. I don't want to bore you too much. Great tires on the bike. So also for road uh, use, um, off-road tires that are not noisy, that are very comfortable to ride and that uh, all stick on any surface. So that was good. The bike was very satisfying. It was really a, a great experience to do this on the Africa Twin. And I'm sure I'm going to go, go back with the GS and, and do something similar as well. It, it will be a completely different driving experience. But here is it's just so enjoyable because you don't have to worry about anything uh, in terms of in the sharp bends in, in the mountains. Um, not having a clutch, not having an engine getting stole is quite uh, uh, gratifying because you don't have to worry uh, about stalling in, in a tight corner and that usually means that you fall uh, or you can fall, which can be um, an unpleasant experience. So this is the beginning of the road uh, uh, from uh, Fréjus to, uh, to Cannes. I'm, it, it is a Saturday, so if you do go, don't choose sunny Saturdays because instead of taking the motorbike, you would be better off taking your bicycle on a Saturday because it's a really, it, there's a lot of bicycle traffic and that's good. And uh, I think I would have enjoyed this very much on a bicycle and, and probably even more than on, on the motorbike. But I obviously, I didn't have my bicycle and I, I took my bike, so I, I, I did it on, on the motorbike. I want to share with you a bit of the driving experience on this coastal road, which in the beginning is still villages and, and beaches, but will go uh, deeper into and higher up into the mountains 
and I'm going to show you a bit more detail. I'll cut out some parts, but I'm leaving, leaving the, the beautiful parts. You can see the mountains there uh, that are you're not allowed to drive in, so it's, uh, it's very nice to see. No off-roading in southern France uh, allowed, so they're getting very strict on this. They're also very worried about uh, fire, uh, so that's also why there is no traffic allowed in the mountains and they're very, very strict and they control it in the summer by helicopter. So I don't think you can just uh, try and uh, and figure out. In in the mountainside, inside it's probably easier, but on the, on the coastal part, a lot of houses, a lot of um, villages. So it's, it's very difficult to find an area where you could drive off road. So I don't, don't think about it, I would say, because um, it's it's going to be a, a pain uh, and you will be uh, fined 150 euros or more depending on uh, what happens this uh, coastal road uh, as i said and we'll see it later on is is a road used by um, bicycles in uh, in uh, on saturdays in in the week uh, there's less traffic obviously there there is traffic but less traffic so if you have the opportunity uh, to drive, uh, take uh, weekdays if the weather is good and you have the opportunity because uh, you'll see later on that there is uh, a lot of uh, mot uh, bicycle traffic on this road. So be careful and be patient uh, with the bicycles and just think of yourself if you had a bicycle, how you would enjoy if somebody took distance and respect for bicycle drivers, which is as much important as respect for motorcycle drivers. So um, driving slowly, driving carefully uh, in this, on this beautiful road uh, and enjoying the Africa Twin uh, in drive mode. So if you know the Africa Twin uh, DCT, you have different modes. I had a comment from somebody who said, oh, I'm using, I'm never using drive mode. I believe me or not, I, I've used drive mode throughout a whole week of driving of uh, many, many hundreds of kilometers. And uh, the drive mode adapts uh, more or less itself. In the mountains, when you are more driving more actively, uh, it will downshift easier. It will rev up higher it will uh, be a much better experience for you. Now, I don't need, uh, and, on, and on these uh, small passages, it will just uh, stay in fourth or go up to fifth, wherever it's possible and permissible. I, I stay, I'm staying behind the bikes out of respect and also for you to enjoy the countryside on this video. After uh, I joined uh, Ken, and uh, I will stop talking now and uh, let you enjoy, um, this road uh, continues all the way to Ken. We'll stop at Mandelieu. I have some more footage on Monaco, but Monaco wasn't enjoyable as much as I thought. I thought I'd do a tour of Monaco, but even end of November, a lot of people in Monaco, obviously a lot of police, a lot of cameras, so you can you can enter Monaco, you can drive around, but it's it's very strict, it's very constrained. So that's not something I would recommend. Doing a few of these passages along the coastal line is fine, but driving through the cities or villages on uh, Ez or other villages is uh, nice, but uh, you have to be very careful, a lot of traffic and narrow roads. So these passages where here, where you can drive more or less freely are seldom and you can enjoy them, but there are a few uh, along this road. I think if you have about five to seven kilometers of uh, open road, that's a lot on this uh, trip. There's not much more I can tell you, uh, except that uh, please, uh, if you haven't done southern France, and if you can't take your bike, you can rent a bike down there. There's 
rental places where you can buy uh, rent a motorbike uh, even a 500 cc or a cx uh, uh no another cx uh, a honda 500 uh, which is sufficient or uh, other bikes so uh, enjoy uh, by renting a bike by flying down to nice and and taking uh, a motorbike but also please please do the canyon the canyon of uh, verdon the verdon area um, but there are so many i went up to nice i went down into the mountainside nice and I, it's, it's you can just continue driving all day and, and as you know maybe the route napoleon starts uh, at the, the the coastal line and uh, goes up to uh, the area of grenoble and even higher up to uh, uh, to the uh, Lake, uh, Geneva, Lake Geneva. So there are many, many roads. You have the Route des Grands Alpes with all the uh, high uh, passages. Now here we have about uh, 16, 18 degrees up to 20, but in the mountainside uh, the day after it became quite chilly. Uh, we had even frost in the, in the mountains in the morning and the week after uh, they had uh, quite some snow. So be careful. I don't assume that the weather will be great. Just uh, be prepared to be flexible and uh, go on short notice. Uh, now with uh, weather forecasts uh, up to 10 days, you, you get a reasonable feel for how the weather is. And, and this area between Marseille and, and Menton is an area that uh, through winds uh, is uh, quite uh, special. It's a, it's rather dry. It's very sunny, and if there is a, if there are a lot of clouds or even rain inside, uh, usually on the on the seaside, you get patches uh, and great patches of of great weather, which you can see here. So uh, off season in the winter in France, um, highly recommendable. Um, take Take your time, take your motorbike, and enjoy the view, I would say. Please leave a comment if you want to know more, um, and I'll tell you a bit more about the cities and where to go, where I slept, for example. I, because I had a trailer, I didn't decide to stay on the seaside. I stayed within uh, resorts areas inside where there's a lot of parking space where you can leave the car in the trailer and you can take your bike and just drive off for the day and come back at night. Short days, obviously. You can start at eight, usually uh, with the sun coming up. You should start, think about starting at nine and finishing at about five because it gets dark at around six. And that's the only disadvantage of the Africa Twin is that uh, because uh, the um, suspension is quite soft, it's impossible to drive at night. Uh, so why is it impossible? The only way to drive an Africa Twin at night is to drive behind a car so that the car can shine <laughs> and show you where the road goes. Because the, um, the headlights of the Africa Twin, and especially when you brake or and you suddenly, sometimes you have no feeling at all for where the road goes. You can you can obviously put the uh, high beam on, uh, but that's uh, not always easy and not always possible. So uh, the only uh, way I felt safe at night with the Africa Twin is driving and staying behind a car uh, to enjoy uh, a safe drive. But uh, as soon as there was no car and it was pitch dark, it was quite a challenge without extra lights on my bike. Have fun, enjoy, leave me a comment if you have uh, one, and see you soon.